Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. Amen. So what does God require for Jesus to come? Acts 3, Acts 3, 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord and he shall send Jesus Christ which was before preached unto you whom heaven must receive unto the time of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. One of the conditions for Jesus to come is that you must have a restitution of all things. Every shame in your life, there must be double honor working. Every loss must be restored. He is not coming for a weak church. He's not coming for a defeated church. He's not. Our brother was talking about poverty this morning. He says, Jesus became poor that we might be rich. And one of the signs of poverty in Proverbs 13, he says, a poor man for lack of insight, though much food is in his farm, remains hungry. Was talking about the garden when God, the Bible says, and in the garden there are four rivers. And God was talking about where the gold was. Poverty is grouping, not knowing where your gold is to answer to your need. Some gold has stored in the belly of a fish. There is no need. There is no financial challenge in your life that has not been addressed before you were born. School fees, the money is somewhere. Rent, the money is somewhere. Lord of gold, say this where we store this Adam. As soon as he fell, they blocked his eyes. He couldn't see anything again. He doesn't know where anything is. And because he doesn't know where anything is, he began to toil. Poverty simply means working for what has been freely given to you. Toiling for what is yours. Yet, they will still give it to the person. Or if they do, they give it partially. He said in Deuteronomy, the hidden riches buried in the sand. He said, God knows where it is. And he says, until your life, spiritually, you are flowing and glowing. Materially, all needs are addressed. Emotionally, sorted out. Every area of your life is adequately addressed. He said you can't go in the rapture. Meaning, the condition of a rapture, one of it is your prosperity. And I like one of the points our brother raised. He says, you know, we have different needs, healings, finances, family, husband, children, and all sorts of needs, some health needs, and each need has its portion in the word. For example, if you're sick, he says that he was wounded for a transgression of bruise. He said by the chastisement of our peace and by those stripes we have been healed. You have to know how to use that. Amen? If you have your bill, you must know where the gold coin is. Whether it's in the fish or it's in the, um, the ones that brought me to Elijah. Um, ravens, it's somewhere. But, he says, by the power of the seed by faith, all 
all needs are addressed. So meaning, those who have not given to God by faith will not lift. I tell you and I explain. <laughs> Let me explain. Let me explain. I'm not saying if you don't give money, you won't go to heaven. No, no, no. I didn't say if you don't give tight, you will die. No, that's not what I said. Don't misquote me. Every aspect of your life must be addressed before Jesus comes. If it's child, you must have it before he comes. If you are said you have it, you must have it. You can't lift making God a liar. Never. It won't happen. You must glorify him on earth. He's waiting to receive just generous. Yeah, these are, uh, hey, these are the people who have propagated me well on the earth. I said it would be this way and it went this way. And this person proved me right. You are my witness. Then they receive you. If you are sick, even malaria, you will lift. <laughs> they are not looking for, because that body must come in glory and power. No sickness must stay there. I remember once I was talking to a lady, she had cancer. I was trying to pray for her, we can get you. He said, let me go and rest. I said, no, if you die, you're not going to rest. Heaven is not waiting to receive sick people. They're waiting to receive the saints triumphant. Overcomers to him that overcometh. You have not overcome. And you must overcome. Let me just go and rest. <laughs> no, 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 no. More than 20 years, I can tell you she's still not resting yet. No way. <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. Everyone is not to go and rest. No. It's the overcomers that rest. You're not overcomer, you're going to start the cycle again. So He's waiting for that anointing of total restitution, complete, whole. When they look at you, nothing missing, nothing lacking. Health, glorifying God. In the body, glorifying God. In your finances, glorifying God. In your marriage, glorifying God. In your home, glorifying God. In your purpose, glorifying God. In your finances, glorifying God. Every aspect of the time of restitution of not some things, all things. And one best way to address that, the woman with the alabaster box, the Bible says she gave the alabaster box of ointment to Jesus. Jesus said, Our sins which are many are forgiven. There's a purpose in her in Christ Jesus. When the Bible was designed, her name was there. <clears throat> she has been living as a prostitute. But they didn't put her name as a prostitute. They put her name as a woman that helped God into the grave that he may rise properly. And because of this one seed, that aspect is addressed. When you preach, mention her name. He says that God is able to make grace, not some. And there's only one issue that address all graces, the seed. Sounds shocking. It's quiet. Looks like you're holding people to ransom, but I'm not. It's one of the ways to have that anointing of restitution of all things, because when that seed blesses God, and it smells that aroma, and there are issues do you know there are issues in your life you don't know they're still not glorifying God? You don't think so? That seed knows and it's speaking. The Bible says for Abel it was speaking. And it's speaking. That's why Jesus was speaking on behalf of the woman. When that seed is giving, you don't speak again. The Lord speaks. The seed speaks. And says, no, there's this area God addressed. There's that aspect. God addressed. And this one, God addressed. That one, when it's all addressed, they say you are fit for the rapture. Amen. 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 <laughs> That's one way to address it. That's not the only way. So if you decide not to give, you can go through the other ways. In 1 Corinthians 13, First, in 1 Corinthians 12, 
God spoke about nine gifts of the Spirit. He said there's a gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom, designing of spirits, prophecy, diverse kind of tongues, interpretation of tongues, working of miracles, the gift of faith, and the gifts of healing. Then he says, covet the best gifts. Pursue the best gifts. Go after the best gifts. Then in 1 Corinthians 13, he said, let me show you a better way to go about it. He said, walk in love. There are other ways to get this, but let me show you the best way. Give God what is his. And you have that restitution of all things. Let me ask you one question. The man with the Alabaska box of ointment, how many people is she going to go and ask for forgiveness from? How many homes has she wrecked? There are graves that some of them have died. That she has to go to the grave. And I don't know how she will bring the spirit up. And say, I'm sorry, I wrecked your marriage before you died. I was the cause of your heartbreak. How many is she going to go and meet? And be asking for forgiveness. How many? Jesus said, by this seed, every sin is wiped out. It's a better way. The Bible has ways. Then he shows you a more excellent way. First Corinthians 13, he said, don't go about chasing gifts. Walk in love. The gifts will flow naturally. Say, so I show you a more excellent way. But there are none very excellent ways. You can go through those ones too. And you will walk. So for you to be raptured, your life in every aspect must be glorifying God. That's why you hear in Revelation all the messages to the church to him that what? Overcome it. I told the lady, I said, get well and die if you want to die. Let's cure the cancer, then die. You know, of course, when we cure the cancer, they want to die again. I said, you want to go and rest? I have no issue with you going to rest. You have a little child. I have no issue, but let's make you an overcome face. Then you can now go and rest. Because it won't welcome you in sickness. He said, I allowed my child's son to be chastened and wounded that you may be healed. And you have made me to waste that portion and that aspect that my child suffered for. That's why I said in thought, John 2, I pray above all things that you may be in health. Praise God. For you to be raptured, your life must be in order. Giving glory to God. I'm not saying you must have money in your pocket. No, I didn't say that. Praise God. But you must be blessed in all ramification. There is no aspect of reproach waiting. I believe if you owe, you would have paid. Because a reproach, even in rapture, the people that owe, you can call the Lord. That man is owing me, please. Don't let him reach there. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adishoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Suruleri Lagos. Get a copy today. So if we say we're close to the rapture, it simply means you are close to glory. You are close to manifestation because it's a condition for rapture. Am I communicating? Yes, sir. And the doctor says it cannot happen. Then it happens. God says you are rapturable. I like that. When the business says it can never rise and it rises, God says I like that. It's coming for a triumphant church. A church without spot, without blemish. Not a church trampled upon by the world. Heaven is not an escape route out of crisis. He has given you faith to solve crisis and then exit into heaven triumphant at your will. Paul said, Jesus said, I have power to lay down my life and to take it again. Paul said, I long to be, not to escape out of all these things. I just prefer there to hear. But he said, I will remain for your sake. Death is not a compulsory operation on a child or on a son. Never. It's a voluntary. You decide, yes, 
Dead person, say, hold on. I'm not, I'm not done. If I see you near here, I will, you've not been to where you're supposed to be. I will, I will suspend you in hell till I'm ready to go. He will move back. You finish what you want to do. Search your house. Put it in order. Bless your children. Bless your grandchildren. You want you're not satisfied, negotiate with God. Say, Lord, I'm leaving this and this for your work. I want this boy to be this. I want this, this, this. Seeing all things fulfilled. Jesus, seeing all things being finished. He said, now he saw that everything has been written, has been accomplished. He said, hey, now. I said, now death come in. Now they just come and snatch. Who are you? Have you ever heard of somebody have a dream that somebody died and they died two years later or three years later? Have you ever heard of it? That's when they started negotiating concerning his exit. Three years. Due three years working on it. Condition of rapture. You must be blessed indeed. If you're not looking like it, it doesn't look like you will lift. So, Find out what you need to do to be it so that you can lift. Amen? Amen. Number two, it's quiet. But I guess you should be happy at that condition because it's given a condition that you need to make it. That you will want you to make it. It means that the church is delaying the second coming of Jesus because the church is not looking triumphant. They're delaying it. And it must be triumphant. Glory. Hallelujah. Must be able to look back and say, mm, thank you, Lord. Like Joshua, every good word of God has been fulfilled in my life. You must be able to long talk like David. I was young, I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never begged for bread. It will never happen. Never. Never. As long as God is on that throne, it has never happened. It will never happen. God. Number two, Luke 18. Luke 18, I read from verse 1. Depressed people won't be raptured. Moody people won't be raptured. Because they don't qualify for Luke 18. And he spake a parable unto them to this end. That men ought always to pray and not to give up. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. The word faint means never give up. Never, 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 never. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God. Of course, that represents Satan. Neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city... And she came to him saying, avenge me of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward, he said within himself, though I fear not God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her lest by her continual coming, she weary me. The Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Shall not God avenge his own elect? which cried day and night unto him, though he be along with them. Number eight, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, not this appearance, at his next coming, will he find this kind of faith on the earth? Meaning, at the next coming of the Lord, which is the rapture, he wants to see people like this for him to take up. Meaning, he's coming for people who don't give up. Men who move right and it collapses. They move left, it falls. 
They move sideways, it fails. Then they move slightly right, and it just shut down. It's not working. And they say, we're moving forward. <laughs> I say, what kind of human being is this? Lord said, you are fit to be raptured. So that is the kind of faith he's looking out for when he's coming. People who don't give up for anything. Faith is represented in so many variables. But he said the type he's looking for at his second coming is those I can't tell how many times this widow went to this unjust judge. The unjust judge has in his power, and the Lord is not talking about the unjust judge. He said, has in his power, listen to this, the ability as a judge to right wrongs done to her. Meaning, somebody has wronged her, and she doesn't want to take the law into her hands. She has to go to the judge and lodge a complaint. They look into it and arrest the person and give her justice. She's not a judge, so she can't do it herself. She needs the judge. Now here is a judge who hates God, hates men, hates widows. He hates her sight. He hates her guts. She disdains him. She irritates him. She repels him. She does not, he doesn't want to give her what she wants. But the Lord said, because this woman will never back down. That judge said, it's better for my life to give her what she wants. So that she can go peacefully. And I took her have my peace. Otherwise, she will not rest. I will not rest. Now, God is not saying that is what happened. God is saying, shall not God. Meaning, it is a situation between you and God. Not between you and Satan. God is saying, if Satan, who does not want to give you what is yours. Do you know, of the seven authorities, each of them has something in their custody that belongs to you. God has something in his custody that belongs to you. He gave it to Peter when he answered the question. And he said, Peter, Simon, Simon, who do men say that I am? Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the most high God. Jesus said, Peter, my father gave you this answer. For answering this question right, I gave you the keys of the kingdom from today. What you bind is, but he didn't have it as a fisherman. He got it by collecting, answering the question and collecting what was his in the hand of God. There are things that belong to you in the hand of God. And he will not give it to you until you pass an exam. There are things that belong to you in the hands of Satan. What did Jesus come to collect from Satan? Souls. That's why he said, all souls are mine. But he couldn't just collect it. He had to go through a process to collect them from Satan. And you, that's why they say the hidden riches of what? Of darkness, not of light. There are wealth in the custody of Satan that belong to you. There are appointments held back by occultists in the kingdom of darkness that belong to you. There are jobs being given out that is given to the occult and it is yours, it's not theirs. Your name is the one on the tag. And for you to collect it, there are certain things you must know. Does Satan want to give it to you, a child of God? Never. It will take faith for you to collect it from him. Now, Jesus said, if this woman can by her persistence and importunity collect what is hers from Satan who does not want to give to her. How much more from God who wants to give to you? Meaning, for you to be raptured, you must collect your dues from God. That story is not about Satan, it's about God. Shall not therefore God, take note, answer his elect. Who do what? Cry to him once? No. Day and night, they are operating the way this widow operated. God, I said this year we're not moving though. Nobody's moving until I get this. I said, you have to wait. He said, no, I'm not going to wait. They're like the prodigals. We're not waiting anywhere. It's this year. And they are, the heaven will not rest. God will not rest. Michael will not rest. Gabriel will not rest. The host of heaven will not rest. God says, let's suspend everything and give this man his due. Jesus said, I'm looking out for such people. <clears throat> a woman told me I had 13 miscarriages. I said, how did you have these three? She said, I had the four child. I said, ah, sir, I'm still going on. I said, <laughs> do some after 13. They say, you don't do. I said, I had 13. No, somebody told me. She told me, 13 miscarriages. So I told my husband, let's continue. <laughs> and he next one we stay. <laughs> and he stayed. 
And the next stage, and the third stage. Those are the people God is going to say, I tire. I tire. 13, I have tried. You have not tried. I believe you have been blessed by that message. And I know your faith has been built up. And I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again same time next week, I want to tell you don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.